All right. In the, sec the first section of Chapter 6, where we're looking at the applications of Newton's laws, we concentrate on the case of equilibrium. In equilibrium, the sum of the forces acting on an object add up to be zero, which means that there is no acceleration in any direction. Remember that no acceleration doesn't necessarily mean that everything is motionless. <clears throat> if an object is moving with a constant velocity, it still will have a zero acceleration. So for this example, I wanted to combine the idea of looking at equilibrium with the inclined plane. Because the inclined, inclined plane presents us with something new that may or may not confuse us. And that is sort of how we can, how we orient our x and y axis as well as what that means for the weight vector, which will end up being at an angle to the x and y axis, which isn't what we're used to. And if that's not bad enough, the way that we write the x and y components of the weight are actually different than we might expect this is a good case where the x component is not associated with the cosine of the angle, or, and the y component is not associated with the sine of the angle. And that has to do with how we define the angle. And so let's take a look at it. All right, so here's our incline plane. We're saying that our incline has an angle of 30 degrees, and I have a mass sitting on that incline plane and there's an applied force that's pulling the mass up the incline. Now, in this scenario, we're told that the mass is moving up the incline with a constant velocity of three meters per second. And so for us, we know that that means that the acceleration is zero. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm going to draw the X and Y axis as we use them for the incline plane. So we orient the x-axis so that it is parallel to the surface of the incline. That makes things easier because then if we do have an acceleration, then it'll be along the x-axis. So that's primarily the reason that we do that. The y-axis, of course, then has to be perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, the force, the applied force, has already been labeled on this picture, but I also want to add the other forces that we would have to think about in the scenario, which are the normal force and the weight. So, so now, the normal force, as it's defined, the, the name normal if you remember, actually means perpendicular. And so it has to be perpendicular to the surface of the inclined plane. And so I've drawn it along the y-axis because that is perpendicular to the surface. Now, the weight acts straight down, mg. Now notice, as I said before, that, that that is not strictly along the x or the y direction, but it's at an angle to both these axes. Now, if you do a little geometry with your right triangles, you should be able to convince yourself that this angle right here is the same as the angle of the incline. Notice that is the angle that the weight makes with the negative y axis. That's not normally how we define our angles when we're doing vector components. Normally, we define them relative to the x-axis. And so that's going to switch things up. This is when we have to be careful and think about the fact that the sine of an angle is associated with the side that is opposite the angle and the hypotenuse. And the cosine of the angle is associated with the side that is adjacent to the angle and the hypotenuse. If we remember those definitions, it's much easier to write our expressions properly for the components of the weight. So, we're going to break down the condition for equilibrium, which is the sum of the forces add up to be zero. We'll break it down into x and y components. 
Now we already know that the right hand side of these expressions are zero. Our job is to substitute in for the, on the left hand side what the forces are or components of forces that are in the x direction if I'm doing this expression or for the y direction if I'm working on this one. In the x direction, and also remember that positive, direction, positive vectors have to be, um, vectors that are positive if they're in the direction that has been deemed to be positive, and vectors have to have, components have to have a negative sign if they're pointing in the direction that has been deemed to be negative. So in this scenario, I'm going to go with the usual. To the right is positive, to the left is negative. For y, up is positive, down is negative. Those are going to be my sign conventions. So in the x direction, I have the force, the applied force that's acting up the incline. And then I have the x component of the weight. Now if I think about that, that's going to be this little piece right here is MGX, and this little piece right here is MGY. So MGX is actually opposite the angle theta, the 30 degree angle, so I need to use the sign to represent that X component. And so I'm just going to write it right here to do one more, one extra step so we avoid confusion. And notice that I also indicated that the x component of the weight was negative because it tends to pull the object down the incline, and that was my negative direction. The force is pulling up the incline. This actually allows me to quite easily figure out what the force is because I can just rearrange this to solve for F. I've been told that the mass is 10 kilograms, gravity is 9.8, and then the sine of 30. If I multiply that out, I find that my force is 49 newtons. Essentially, the force that's being applied to this block is equal and opposite to the component of weight that pulls it down the incline. And that keeps it from accelerating in one direction or the other. And so it can move at a constant velocity as long as that force stays equal to that weight component. Now let's look at the y direction to find an expression for the normal force. The normal force acts straight up in the positive y direction. And the y component of weight is acting in the negative y direction. The y component of the weight, which is right here, is represented by the side that is adjacent to the angle theta. So we're going to use cosine. to calculate the y component of the weight. Then I can actually rearrange this to solve for normal. And find that my normal force ends up to be 84.9 newtons. I think this is also a nice place to point out that this is a scenario where the normal force is not just equal to the weight. It's only equal to the vertical component of the weight because in a sense the normal force is a force of support that acts against that y component of weight. So it's not just equal to mg, but it's equal to mgy in this case. It's a good habit to get into because often, because it happens so frequently, students get um, into the habit of saying the normal force is just equal to mg, and it's just not always true. We're going to run into situations where it's different, and here's one of them. So hopefully this example not only gives you a little bit more familiarity with the inclined plane, but also gives you a sense of how we might use the equations for equilibrium in a problem in order to solve for unknowns that we are being asked to find. Thanks.